Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our winter edition of Book Buzz. My name is Betty McDowell, and I'm joined by Shermaine Burleson and Meg Miller. We're going to be going over adult fiction, nonfiction, and graphic novels. Before we get started, just a quick reminder. We're going to be doing our winter reading challenge again. So just read five books from January 1st to February 28th from the categories that we've listed, and you'll get a prize once, you've, um, once the challenge is over. We'll start accepting forms on January 15th. If you want to look ahead at the categories, we'll have them up on the website on December 15th in our book list page. With that, I will turn it over to Shermaine, who's going to be covering adult fiction. Hi, my name is Shermaine Burles, and I'm the head of technical services and cataloging at Flickerville Public Library. And this is the December Book Buzz. All We Left Unsaid by Natalie K. Martin. Um, this is a novel about family and love and betrayal and two sisters that meant the world to each other until one day a secret shatters everything and Jess and Ivy have shared everything, childhood memories, um, an apartment, which they call flats in England. This is a novel based in England as well and rom-coms and they spend all their time together but the one person that they can't share is Ivy Spin. Um, friend Finn and when Jesse falls for him um, it's a betrayal that puts this deep deep mistrust between the sisters and so after that falling out um, Jesse receives a call that changes everything and like what happens if it's too late to say that you're sorry her name is Night by um, Yasmin Angoy um, is about a Guyanian assassin. So what happens is that Nina was kidnapped from the Guyanian village as a child. And now she is one of the most top assassins, basically, in this powerful syndicate called the tribe. And so she is trying to topple this human trafficking ring and avenge her family. So basically, um, her village was raised to the ground. And her and some other women were kidnapped. And she wants to kill the man that, or the men that have done this thing to her and her family. But um, she is on an assignment in Miami. And she ends up saving a life instead of taking one, which is her job as an assassin. But she gets an assignment where she has to kill a man she's come to respect. And she struggles to... Uh, between loyalty to the tribe and her new purpose that she has as, you know, not always being an assassin. So because of that, she has basically decided that um, she is going to do something different. But before she can get back to the life that she wants, um, the vengeance that she wants is also a part of what she needs. And so she's going to basically take this group down and she is going to do everything she can to do that and so this is what this is about and it's the first book in the Nina Knight series um about a guy in an assassin single black female by um Tracy Brown is about four friends Ivy Coco Deja and Nikki and it's about black love and also the tested bonds of black families and what it means to face the world as a black man and a black woman and the joy and pain of the black experience in America so these childhood friends have all these different experiences and there's all these twists and turns about what it means to make it in America and so that's what single black females about this book is a Meet Cute by K.M. Jackson, How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days. Um, so this is basically about, um, it's like a, when Harry met Sally and kind of like a um, Meet Cute story you may hear about what happened. So um, Bethany is devastated when the tabloids say that Keanu Reeves is about to tie the knot. And she thinks that she is his true soulmate. So she is desperately trying to convince Keanu to call off the wedding. 
and her BFF, her ride or die, Truman, um, is going on this long trip for him to just basically fulfill this dream of meeting her forever crush um, and confess like her love. And they get into all sort of like sticky situations, not quite Thelma and Louise, but um, just, you know, typical like rom-com movie of things to come and things that happen. And they go from city to city, um, from basically from New York to Los Angeles. And like, will she be able to convince him that she's the one or maybe she'll discover true love has always been with her, like by her side. Three More Months by Sarah Ever, um, Ekavar, I think, or Ekavari. Um, if I'm not saying that right, you can add me. Um, three More Months. So this story is about, like, what if you woke up one day and the person that you loved that had passed or that you lost was suddenly alive again? So for Chloe... Um, she was all about her job, spending time with the most important, important person in her life. Her mother was just something that she was going to change. She was always going to do that. So she planned a trip home, but her mom dies hours before she arrives. And so Chloe didn't get to get, say goodbye. And so she's just so upset about not being able to say goodbye to her mother. And there's all this regret. Um, but just days before the funeral, she finds out that her mother is alive and well, and that it's not May, like she thought, when this event happens. And so she's been transported back in time to like a month before. And um, she's confused because everybody, like her brother, her friends, they don't understand why she's confused. Like, she can't make sense of it. But she is going to make the most of it that she can. Because she wants to repair all the damage that's been done by her being a workaholic and just all these things that have happened. So to prevent all of that, um, she is going to use a second chance to make that happen. So would you do that if you could? Tell Me How to Be by Neil Patel, um, Patel um, excuse me, is um, it's kind of a dark comedy about an Indian American family and the secrets that we kind of keep. So his mother, Rinu, is, um, she always had a doting husband, the perfect home, healthy sons. Um, but on the one year anniversary of her husband's death, um, she is just kind of like living her best life. But then like things started creeping up. And as her husband's death anniversary approaches, she's thinking about 35 years ago, like if she chose the wrong life. And her son, Akesh, has everything he ever wanted, but he tries to do his songwriting career in Los Angeles and commit to his boyfriend and all these things. But he's haunted by painful memories, too. So his mom was like, I'm selling the family home. And Akesh was like, OK, I'm going to come back to Illinois and we're going to say goodbye and move on. So together, they're packing up the house and. They're kind of like going into their own like personal little secrets in their lives and different things like that. So Renu starts sending these messages to this man she almost married. And there's like this whole affair kind of like going on or emotional affair at least. And then Akesh slips back into these bad habits that he used to have of like, you know, hiding himself in different things. And then dealing with like the first boy that like broke his heart and all these things that kind of happened. And um, it's about the earliest recollections that we have about our lives, but also like a love story of a mother and son trying to navigate in this world that they've created and what happens when you do that. Um, Without a Hitch um, is by two very, very um, good authors. And so this is kind of like Sweet Home Alabama meets Emily in Paris. So this is um, kind of like a, not exactly a rom-com, but kind of like a um, romantic comedy, sort of. But also just like a, um, a comedy of errors, sort of, 
about um, event planning and southern weddings. And so Lottie has a new career as a wedding planner. And she's unlucky in love and 20-something. And she's creating all these happy memories for all these other people. And so she's just decided that wedding planning is like the thing that she's going to do. And she likes doing that. And so she is navigating through like this cut rope, back savvy, um, over the top, unlimited budgets, um, all kinds of things that go with wedding planning. And um, she has her hands full for every million dollar wedding that she helps organize. So her boss ends up uh, announcing that there's an opening in the new office and she sees it as a chance to carve out her place and earn an income and um, that basically, you know, will get her closer to her dreams of love and and affection and all these type of things. So she sees a chance to finally carve out like this life that she wants and the weddings keep getting bigger and the clients keep getting more over the top. And all the mistakes and keep getting funnier and the stakes are higher and higher for each wedding she does. And she's discovering whether she'll risk anything for love or all for love and how far she'll go to find herself. So there's high end seven weddings and these are inspired by real events in the author's lives. And so, um, so there's a little truth to some of what's happening by the author's own experiences. And this is a um, about taking ownership and facing fears. And um, she has to plan her ex-boyfriend's wedding and like choosing the happy ending that wasn't the one you expected. And a lot of us can identify with that. And so that's what Without a Hitch is about. And so I would love to hear from you and please contact me to let me know how we're doing or books and items you'd like to see at the library. My email is listed below. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shermaine. Now I'm going to be sharing some adult nonfiction. And we'll be starting with some biographies and memoirs. First up, we have Garbo by Robert Gottlieb. Award-winning master critic Robert Gottlieb takes a singular and multifaceted look at the life of silver screen legend Greta Garbo and the culture that worshipped her. Wherever you look in the period between 1925 and 1941, Robert Gar Gottlieb writes in Garbo, Greta Garbo is in people's minds, hearts, and dreams. Strikingly glamorous and famously inscrutable, she managed in 16 short years to infiltrate the world's subconscious. The end of her film career, when she was only 36, only made her more irresistible. In Garbo, the acclaimed critic and editor Robert Gottlieb offers a vivid and thorough retelling of her life, beginning in the slums of Stockholm and proceeding through her years of struggling to elude the attention of the world. It includes 250 movie stills, formal portraits, and snapshots. Next we have This Boy We Made by Taylor Harris. One morning, Tofs Taylor Harris's round cheeked, lively 20 month old wakes up listless, only lifting his head to gulp down water. She rushes Tofs to the doctor, ignoring the part of herself trained by years of therapy for generalized anxiety disorder, then tries to whisper that she's overreacting. But at the hospital, her maternal instincts are confirmed. Something is wrong with her boy and Taylor's life will never be the same. She spends countless hours trying to navigate health and education systems that can be hostile to black mothers and children. At night, she Googles, prays, and interrogates her every action. This Boy We Made is a stirring and radiantly written examination of the bond between mother and child, full of hard-won insights about fighting for and finding meaning when nothing goes as expected. And by Jimmy Attenberg, I came all this way to meet you. In this brilliant, fierce, and funny memoir of transformation, Jimmy Attenberg reveals the defining moments that pushed her to create a life and voice she could claim for herself. What does it take to devote oneself to art? What does it mean to own one's ideas? What does the world look like for a woman moving solo through it? As the daughter of a traveling salesman in the Midwest, Attenberg was drawn to a life on the road. It is during these adventures that she begins to reflect on the experiences of her youth. The trauma, the challenges, the risks she has taken. Exploring themes of friendship, independence, class, and drive, I came all this way to meet you as an inspiring story of finding one's way home, emotionally, artistically, and physically. 
and an examination of art and individuality that will resonate with anyone determined to listen to their own creative calling. And by Edgar Gomez, we have High Risk Homosexual. A debut memoir and about coming of age as a gay Latinx man, High Risk Homosexual opens in the ultimate anti-gay space. Edgar Gomez's uncle's cockfighting ring in Nicaragua, where he was sent at 13 years old to become a man. Readers follow Gomez through the queer spaces where he learned to love being gay and Latinx, including Pulse nightclub in Orlando, a drag queen convention in Los Angeles, and the doctor's office where he was di diagnosed a high-risk homosexual. With vul vulnerability, humor, and quick-witted insights into racial, sexual, familial, and professional power dynamics, Gomez shares a hard-won path to taking pride in the parts of himself he was taught to keep hidden. His story is, scintillating, is a scintillating, beautiful reminder of the importance of leaving space for joy. And by Bernardine Evaristo, we have Manifesto on Never Giving Up. Bernardine Evaristo's 2019 Booker Prize win was a historic and revolutionary occasion, with Evaristo being the first Black woman and first Black British person ever to win the prize in its 50-year history. Girl, Woman, Other was named a favorite book of the year by President Obama and Roxane Gay, was translated into 35 languages, and has now reached more than a million readers. Evaristo's astonishing nonfiction debut, Manifesto, is a vibrant and inspirational account of Evaristo's life and career as she rebelled against the mainstream and fought over several decades to bring her creative work into the world. With her characteristic humor, Evaristo describes her childhood as one of eight siblings with a Nigerian father and a white Catholic mother, tells the story of how she helped set up Britain's first Black women's theater company, remembers the queer relationships of her 20s, and recounts her determination to write books that were absent in the literary world around her. Both unconventional memoir and inspirational text, Manifesto is a unique reminder to us all to persist in doing work we believe in, even when we might feel overlooked or discounted. And by Wajahat Ali, we have Go Back to Where You Came From and other helpful recommendations on how to become American. Go back to where you came from, you terrorist. This is just one of the many warm, lovely, and helpful tips that Wajahat Ali and other children of immigrants receive on a daily basis. Go back where exactly? Fremont, California, where he grew up, but is now an unaffordable place to live, or Pakistan, the country his parents left behind half a century ago. Growing up living the suburban American dream, young Wajahat devoured comic books, devoid of brown superheroes, and fielded well-intentioned advice from uncles and aunties, like become a doctor, he had turmeric stains under his fingernails, was accident prone, suffered from OCD, and wore husky pants, but he was as American as his neighbors with roots all over the world. Then when Ali was studying at University of California, Berkeley, 9-11 happened. Muslims replaced communists as America's number one enemy, and he became an accidental spokesman and ambassador of all ordinary, unthreatening things Muslimy. Now middle-aged dad, Ali has become one of the foremost and funniest public intellectuals in America. And go back to where he came from, he tackles the dangers of Islamophobia, white supremacy, and chocolate hummus, peppering personal stories with astute insights into national security, immigration, and pop culture. In this refreshingly bold, hopeful, and uproarious memoir, Ali offers indispensable lessons for cultivating a more compassionate, inclusive, and delicious America. And now we have some science books. Starting with Emotional, How Feelings Shape Our Thinking. You make hundreds of decisions every day, from what to eat for breakfast to how long you should invest, and not one of those decisions would be possible without emotion. It has long been said that thinking and feeling are separate and opposing forces in our behavior. But as Leonard Mudd now, the best-selling author of Subliminal, tells us, extraordinary advances in psychology and neuroscience have proven that emotions are as critical to our well-being as thinking. Journeying from the labs of pioneering scientists to real-world scenarios that have flirted with disaster, he shows us how our emotions can help, why they sometimes hurt, and what we can learn in both instances. Using deep insights into our evolution and biology, Lon now gives us the tools to understand our emotions better and to maximize their benefits. Emotional explores the new science of feelings and offers us an essential guide to making the most of one of nature's greatest gifts. And by Dan Saladino, we have Eating to Extinction. Over the past several decades, globalization has homogenized what we eat and done so ruthlessly. The numbers are stark. Of the roughly 6,000 different plants once consumed by human beings, only nine remain major staples today. Just three of these, rice, wheat, and corn, now provide 50% of all our calories. Dig deeper and the trends are more worrisome still. 
If it strikes you that everything is starting to taste the same wherever you are in the world, you're by no means alone. In Eating to Extinction, the dis distinguished BBC food journalist Dan Saladino travels the world to experience and document our most at-risk foods before it's too late. He tells the fascinating stories of people who continue to cultivate, forage, hunt, cook, and consume what the rest of us have forgotten or didn't even know existed. From an indigenous American chef refining pre-colonial recipes to farmers tending Geechee red peas on the sea islands of Georgia, the individuals profiled in Eating to Extinction are essential guides to treasured foods that have endured in the face of rampant sameness and standardization. They also provide a roadmap to a food system that is healthier, more robust, and above all, richer in flavor and meaning. Okay, moving on to true crime. I'm gonna start with Murder at Teal's Pond by David Bushman and Mark T. Gibbons. In 1908, Hazel Drew was found floating in a pond in Sand Lake, New York, beaten to death. The unsolved murder inspired rumors, speculation, ghost stories, and almost a century later, the phenomenon of Twin Peaks. Who killed Hazel Drew? Like Laura Palmer, she was a paradox of personalities, a young, beautiful puzzle with secrets. Perhaps the even trickier question is, who was Hazel Drew? Seeking escape from her poor country roots, Hazel found work as a domestic servant in the notoriously corrupt metropolis of Troy, New York. Fate derailed her plans for reinvention. But the investigation that followed her brutal murder was fraught with red herrings, wild goose chases, and unreliable witnesses. Did officials really follow the leads, or did they bury them to protect the guilty? The likely answer is revealed in an absorbing true mystery that's ingeniously reconstructed and every bit as haunting as the cultural obsession it inspired. And by Anne Walbert Burgess, we have A Killer by Design. Lurking beneath the progressive activism and sex positivity in the 1970s and 80s, a dark undercurrent of violence rippled across the American landscape. With reported cases of sexual assault and homicide on the rise, the FBA created a specialized team, the Mine Hunters, better known as the Behavioral Science Unit, to track down the country's most dangerous criminals. And yet narrowing down a seemingly infinite list of potential suspects seemed daunting at best and impossible at worst, until Dr. Ann Walbert Burgess stepped on the scene. In A Killer by Design, Burgess reveals how her pioneering research on sexual assault and trauma caught the attention of the FBI and steered her right into the middle of a chilling serial murder investigation in Nebraska. Over the course of the next two decades, she helped the budding unit identify, interview, and track down dozens of notoriously violent offenders. This book pulls us directly into the investigations as she experienced them, interweaving never-before-seen interview transcripts and crime scene drawings alongside her own vivid recollections to provide unprecedented insight into the minds of deranged criminals and the victims they left behind. Next, we have A Taste for Poison by Neil Bradbury. As any reader of Murder Mysteries can tell you, poison is one of the most enduring and popular weapons of choice for a scheming murderer. It can be slipped into a drink, smeared onto the tip of an arrow or the handle of a door, even filtered through the air we breathe. But how exactly do these poisons work to break our bodies down? And what can we learn from the damage they inflict? In a fascinating blend of popular science, medical history, and true crime, Dr. Neil Bradbury explores the most morbidly captivating method of murder from a cellular level. Alongside real-life accounts of murderers and their crimes are the equally compelling stories of the poisons involved, 11 molecules of death that work their way through the human body, and eliminate the way in which our bodies function. And Tell Me Everything, the story of a private investigation by Erica Krauss. Erica Krauss has one of those faces. I don't know why I'm telling you this, people say, spilling confessions. In fall 2002, Erica accepts a new contract job investigating lawsuits as a private investigator. The role seems perfect for her, but she quickly realizes she has no idea what she's doing. Then a lawyer named Grayson assigns her to investigate a sexual assault, a college student who was attacked by football players and recruits at a party a year earlier. Erica knows she should turn the investigation down. Her own history with sexual violence makes it all too personal, but she takes the job anyway, inspired by Grayson's conviction that he could help change things forever. And maybe she could too. Over the next five years, Erica learns everything she can about the PI technique, tracking down witnesses and investigating a culture of sexual assault, harassment ingrained in the university's football program. But as the investigation grows into a national scandal and a historic civil rights case, Erica finds herself increasingly consumed. When the case and her life both implode at the same time, Erica must figure out how to help win the case without losing herself. 
And now we have a few essay collections, starting with These Precious Days by Anne Patchett. As a writer, Anne Patchett knows what the outcome of her fiction will be. Life, however, often takes turns we don't see coming. Padgett ponders this truth in these wise essays that afford a fresh and intimate look into her mind and heart. Turning her writer's eye on her own experiences, she transforms the private into the universal, providing us all a way to look at our own worlds anew and reminds how fleeting and enigmatic life can be. Infused with the author's grace, wit, and warmth, the pieces in these precious days resonate deep in the soul, leaving an indelible mark and demonstrate why Anne Patchett is one of the most celebrated writers of our time. And next we have You Don't Know Us Negroes and other essays by Zora Neale Hurston. You Don't Know Us Negroes is the quintessential gathering of provocative essays from one of the world's most celebrated writers, Zora Neale Hurston. Spanning more than three decades and penned during the backdrop of the birth of the Harlem Renaissance, Montgomery bus, bus boycott, desegregation of the military, and school integration, Hurston's writing articulates the beauty and authenticity of Black life as only she could. Collectively, these essays showcase the roles enslavement and Jim Crow have played in intensifying Black people's inner lives and culture rather than destroying it. She argues that in the process of surviving, Black people reinterpreted every aspect of American culture. White supremacy prevents the world from seeing or completely recognizing Black people in their full humanity, and Hurston made it her job to lift the veil and reveal the heart and soul of the race. Demonstrating the breadth of this revered and influential writer's work, You Don't Know Us Negroes and Other Essays is an invaluable chronicle of a writer's development and a window into her world and mind. And for poetry, we have Call Us What We Carry by Amanda Gorman. This luminous poetry collection by number one New York Times bestselling author and presidential inaugural poet Amanda Gorman captures a shipwrecked moment in time and transforms it into a lyric of hope and healing. In Call Us What We Carry, Gorman explores history, language, identity, and erasure through an imaginative and intimate collage. Harnessing the collective grief of a global pandemic, these poems shine a light on a moment of reckoning and reveal that Gorman has become our messenger from the past and our voice for the future. And we have a couple of cookbooks by Chef Freddie Bitsui and James Fraioli. We have New Native Kitchen, celebrating modern recipes of the American Indian. From Freddie Bitsui, the former executive chef at Mitsutam Native Foods Cafe at the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian, and James Beard Award-winning author, James Fraioli, New Native Kitchen is a celebration of indigenous cuisine. Accompanied by original artwork by Gabriela Trujillo, and offering delicious dishes like cherry stone clam soup from the northwestern Wampanoag and spice rub pork tenderloin from the Pueblo peoples, Mitsui showcases the variety of flavor and culinary history on offer from coast to coast, providing modern interpretations of a hundred recipes that have long fed this country. With recipes as varied as the peoples that inspired them, New Native Kitchen celebrates the indigenous heritage of American cuisine. And by Talia Korn, we have the work Workweek Lunch Cookbook. With Workweek Lunch founder Tally Korn's grab and go lunch recipes, res readers can avoid their noon rush and save money rather than spending a fortune on the same boring takeout salad every day. Each of her make ahead recipes, from comfort foods to takeout copycats to hearty bowls, is designed to stay fresh all week, so readers only need to dedicate a couple hours a week to meal prepping. Talia also shares her best tips and tricks for storing make ahead lunches to reassemble and heat at the office for the quickest and most convenient lunch option around. And a couple of self-help books, starting with Out of the Office by Charlie Wurzel and Anne Helen Peterson. If you think you've been working from home recently, Charlie Wurzel and Anne Helen Peterson are here to tell you otherwise. What we've been doing is something else entirely. A compromise made under the duress of a national crisis that's satisfactory for neither the worker nor the employer for Warzel and Peterson, the past year has revealed that there may be another path forward for work, one that doesn't involve hellish daily commutes and the demands of jam-packed work schedules that no longer make sense. As a society, we have talked for decades about flexible work assignments. In this book, the authors make clear that we are at an inflection point where this becomes possible for many companies and their employees. Out of Office combines groundbreaking reporting and the couple's own experiences after they made the decision to leave their desk jobs in New York City for Montana. They describe how workers and employers across America and around the world are finding new ways of working that make people happier and more productive and make companies more profitable. This is a book that aims to reshape our entire relationship to the office. 
and from the creator of The Good Place and the co-creator of Parks and Recreation, Michael Schur, we have How to Be Perfect. Most people think of themselves as good, but it's not always easy to determine what's good or bad, especially in a world filled with complicated choices and pitfalls and booby traps and bad advice. Fortunately, many smart philosophers have been pondering this conundrum for millennia, and they have guidance for us. With bright wit and deep insight, How to Be Perfect explains concepts like deontology, utilitarianism, existentialism, Ubuntu, and more, so we can sound cool at parties and become better people. Sure starts off with easy ethical questions like, should I punch my friend in the face for no reason? And works his way up to the most complex moral issues we all face, such as, can I still enjoy great art if it was created by terrible people? How much money should I give to charity? Why bother being good at all when there are no consequences for being bad? And much more. By the time the book is done, we'll know exactly how to act in every conceivable situation so as to produce a verifiably maximal amount of moral good. We will be perfect and all our friends will be jealous. Okay, not quite. Instead, we'll gain fresh, funny, and inspiring wisdom on the toughest issues we face every day. And to wrap up, we have a couple of history books. And to wrap up, we have a couple of history books, starting with Flying Blind, The 737 Max Tragedy, and The Fall of Boeing by Peter Robeson. Boeing is a century-old titan of industry. It played a major role in the early days of commercial flight, World War II bombing missions, and moon landings. The plane maker remains a cornerstone of the U.S. economy, as well as a linchpin in the awesome routine of modern air travel. But in 2018 and 2019, two crashes of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 killed 346 people. The crashes exposed a shocking pattern of malfeasance, leading to the biggest crisis in the company's history and one of the costliest corporate scandals ever. How did things go so horribly wrong at Boeing? Flying Blind is a definitive expose of the disasters that transfixed the world. It reveals how a broken corporate culture paved the way for a catastrophe and shows how in the race to beat the competition and reward top executives, Boeing skimped on testing, pressured employees to meet unrealistic deadlines, and convinced regulators to put planes into service without properly equipping them or their pilots for flight. At once riveting and disturbing, it shows how an iconic company fell prey to a win-at-all-cost mentality, threatening an industry and endangering countless lives. And last, we have South to America by Imani Perry. In South to America, Imani Perry shows that the meaning of American is inextricably linked with the South and that our understanding of its history and culture is the key to understanding the nation as a whole. This is the story of a black woman in native Alabama returning to the region she has always called home and considering it with fresh eyes. Her journey is full of detours, deep dives, and surprising encounters with places and people. She renders Southerners from all walks of life with sensitivity and honesty, sharing her thoughts about a troubling history and the ritual humiliations and joys that characterize so much of Southern life. With uncommon insight and breathtaking clarity, South to America offers an assertion that if we want to build a more humane future for the United States, we must center our concern below the Mason-Dixon line. Thank you very much for joining tonight. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Meg Miller, who's going to be covering adult graphic novels. Thank you. Meg Miller here with a selection of upcoming titles for our adult graphic novel and adult manga collections. To start my portion of this presentation, I've got a couple of books that harken back to earlier adult graphic stories with the complete runs of both Crime Illustrated in January and Terror Illustrated in February from the innovative Picto Fiction magazine containing illustrated prose stories, entertaining comics, commonly known as EC Comics, which was founded in the 1940s and published through the mid 50s. The Crime Illustrated even contains a rare third issue that was unpublished in its time. These next two titles are a small taste of the manga titles you have to look forward to. Lupin the Third Greatest Heists from Seven Seas is a collection of 12 classic stories from throughout Lupin's history. Taken from Monkey Punch's Lupin the Third and New Lupin the Third, these stories have been fully retranslated and are collected in one volume for the first time. Monkey Punch's immortal creations are among the most beloved characters of all time, from Master Thief Lupin the Third to his trusted sidekicks and tenacious rivals. 
Lupin III is also an icon of animation, starring in the stunning 2019 CG animation animated film Lupin III, the first, and Hayao Miyazaki's feature film directorial debut, The Castle of Caligastro. This special collection of Monkey Punch's classic manga stories was originally published in Japan as a tribute to his passing in 2019. The Crater from Digital Manga Publishing is a collection of self-contained short stories ranging from horror, mystery, to science fiction. World-renowned author Osamu Tezuka introduces you to an ominous world of sin and regret. You don't want to miss this one. A man from the slums faces his doppelganger from the other side of the tracks. Three guests visiting a hot spring are reminded of their past sins by a magical ringing bell only they can hear. And stranded on the moon, an astronaut is struck is stuck within a crater sustained for a century by a mysterious life-giving gaseous fume that the moon crater expels. And the following three titles are of a more nonfiction variety. First, with Monster Mind, dealing with anxiety and self-doubt from Ablaze, Alfonso Casas's Monster Mind is a very personal account of the inner monsters that live inside his head. But who doesn't have a monster inside them? Who has never heard that voice inside their head, undermining everything they do? You're not good enough. You just got really lucky. There are people far better and more qualified than you. In a very honest exercise, Alfonso Casas identifies and introduces his own monsters to his readers. Mr. Past Traumas, Mr. Fear, Mr. Social Anxiety, Mr. Imposter Syndrome, Mr. Sadness, Mr. Doubt. The Pessimistic, the Insecure, the Self-Demanding, the Monster that Keeps You from Sleeping While You Think of What You Could Have Said Back in That Conversation Two Years Ago or that keeps you looking over the punctuation of every text message to figure out the tone lurking beneath the surface. All those monsters make up the bestiary of contemporary society, but the anxiety generation is expert in more things, in looking inside themselves and their lives, and why not, in laughing at their own neurosis as best they can. In the end, if the monsters won't leave us, we might as well get to know them and laugh at them. Anxiety is another pandemic, but the monsters dwelling inside us are funny too, especially as drawn by Alfonso Casas. The Art of Sushi from NBM Publishing, fly to Japan and come discover all there is to know about sushi. After revealing the secrets of chocolate to us, Frankie Alacron offers a gourmet panorama of this exceptional dish that has conquered the planet. But do you really know sushi? The author traveled to Japan to meet all the players involved in the making of this true work of culinary art, from the traditional starred chef to the young cook who is shaking up the rules. Including all the artisans and producers involved, this book covers the most emblematic of Japanese products from A to Z, a fascinating journey of discovery that along the way tells us a lot about Japan itself. You'll never believe the precision and detailed obsession with quality ingredients involved. And Cocaine Coast from Ablaze is a true story and expose on drug trafficking in Europe, now a hit Netflix show. In Cocaine Coast, journalist Nacho Carretero and illustrator Luis Bustos tell the incredible true story of how a sleepy, unassuming corner of Spain became the cocaine gateway into Europe from Colombia exposing a new generation of criminals, cartels, and corrupt officials more efficient and ruthless than any who came before. Looking for a complete story to read? These titles are for you. Out of the Blue, the complete series from Aftershock is both volumes of the World War II aerial combat classic now in one complete softcover edition. A war is a difficult thing to kill. The Second World War is almost over, but no one seems to have told the Germans. As Royal Air Force pilot Jamie McKenzie finds out when he's assigned to deadly shipping strikes along the enemy coast. Flying the Mosquito Fighter Bomber against heavily armed targets is dangerous enough at the best of times. But after incurring the wrath of his vengeful commanding officer, Jamie is assigned to the most unpopular navigator in the unit. Not to mention the least reliable aircraft. Worse still, the commander's sights are firmly set on Jamie's beautiful young wife, Beth. 
Writer Garth Ennis and artist Keith Burns reunite after the success of their series Johnny Red, presenting another tale of World War II aerial combat featuring skies black with flak and enemy fighters. Nail-biting low-level action and the dark humor of men whose lives can be snatched away at any second out of the blue. Spree, the complete series from Vault Comics, it's the end of the world, but the mall lives on. Here in the heartland of the U.S. of A., the world has ended. But worry not, because the mall still stands. And within the walls of this consumeristic mecca lies a new world order. Box store tribes and name brand gangs all vying for limited space and resources. So actually, you can worry. Especially for poor Andre Reed, who after the assassination of a tribal leader, has to navigate the mad haven to prove his innocence and prevent the end of the world again. This collects the five issue series. And Mom, Mother of Madness from Image Comics and Game of Thrones superstar Amelia Clark's debut. The mayhem begins with Maya, under the weather scientist by day, over the top superhero by night, and badass single mom 24 7. This is Deadpool action and flea bag comedy collide when Maya activates her freakish superpowers to take on a secret sect of human traffickers. Bath times at seven. Bedtime's at eight, and crime fighting never sleeps when villains out of Maya's shadowy past come to collect. This is for mature readers. Comedy and chaos await with co-writer Marguerite Bennett and the glamorous artist of Horde, Layla Lees. And Bloody Hell from A Wave New World is full of mystical battles, historical detail, and the power of human frailty, ingenuity, and heroism. Bloody Hell gives new meaning to the war to end all wars. With a shattering apocalyptic throwdown in the trenches, millennia in the making. Drafted into a war he has no desire to fight, infantryman Private Anderson's only goal is to make it out of World War I alive. A task made much more difficult when he's ordered to cross enemy lines on an explosive secret mission. His unit never makes it to their destination. Instead, they unwittingly free a group of ancient Viking gods, imprisoned for centuries by Loki's children, Fenrir and Hel. Mad as hell and tearing for a fight, the gods, led by brave Heinrich, decide to conquer Earth and bring about Ragnarok. With a deadly skill for naughty subterfuge inherited from their legendary father, Loki's children have a few tricks left to play, and the fate of the world may rest on reluctant Anderson thrust into yet another war with consequences on a mythical scale. And from Dark Horse, Parasomnia, from Cullen Bunn and Andrea Muti, comes a new dark fantasy tale of two worlds split between dreams and reality. After his son disappears, a broken down man braves a nightmarish dreamscape in order to find him and battles the ruthless cult that seeks to rule the land of dreams as the barrier between realities starts to collapse. Decorum from Image is the highly lauded, mouth-wateringly illustrated miniseries from best-selling comic titan Jonathan Hickman and acclaimed artist Mike Huddleston. Now collected in its entirety in a stunning hardcover edition for the first time, Decorum blends the high-impact event-level storytelling of Hickman's recent re-envisioning of X-Men with the sprawling, addictive world-building of the recently concluded East of West. In the world of Decorum, there are many assassins in the known universe. Decorum is the story of the most well-mannered one. The perfect standalone story for fans of epics like Star Wars and assassin, assassin action tales like John Wick, but set in a lush science fiction world where the stakes are even higher. Also from Image Comics, Siphon, when fast-living EMT is entrusted with the power to sense and siphon pain from others, Silas is prevented, presented with a new purpose, to ease the misery of those around him. But the more he uses this gift, the more it curses him with carrying the burdens of others' pain. And it soon attracts the attention of mysterious forces who covet the power for themselves forcing Silas to decide whether he will continue his mission or revert to his old ways. Comic book documentarian Patrick Meany teams up with artist Jeff Edwards with a story by Moshin Asharaf for a creator-owned, noir fantasy-evoking 
the lore of Neil Gaiman's American Gods, and the psychological thrilling action of M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable. Another image title is Side Six Sidekicks of Trigger Keaton. This is for fans of Chew and Assassin Nation. Comes a new action mystery series from the Eisner Award nominees Chris Schweitzer and Kyle Starks. The world's most unlikable action star has been found dead, and his previous TV sidekicks are looking to solve the mystery. But how can you catch a murderer when almost everyone hated the victim? Now these sidekicks are going to learn what it means to the stars of the show. That is, if any one of them survives the stuntman war. Rewild from Burger Books is Fables Meets the Fisher King in this dark, magical, realist tale about a mysterious young homeless woman, an enterprising engineer with a troubled past, and a dangerous new breed of fae. Ravaged by climate change and furious with the human race. A motley collection of disturbing mythological creatures have started to stake out the land of those who damaged them and the planet, and they aren't backing down. When Poe, an entrancing drifter and self-proclaimed changeling, demands that Demon build a park to appease them, he first worries about her grasp on reality, and then, along with his family, his own. Soon he, and the reader, must question the rationality of our entire species as Demon struggles to save his city, and maybe even the world. But are we past the point of no return? Fables creator Mark Buckingham calls Rewild a timely examination of humanity's relationship with the natural world woven into a glorious fantasy adventure pitting man against fairy. And real hero shit from Iron Circus Comics. Adventure awaits, but our heroes are missing some manpower. People are going missing in a small mountain town. The city guard are blocked from a real investigation, and the notorious Underguild has assigned Michel a secret mission, find the missing villagers, and bring whatever kidnapped them to justice. Unfortunately for him and his fellow adventurers, Annie and Hocus, they're short of fighter and need one more party member to foil this plot. Even more unfortunately, the only volunteer seems to be the arrogant, ostentatious purple playboy prince, Eugene looking to cure his boredom. Covert is not a concept that he's familiar with, and let's just say his commitment to the mission is questionable. Every day is basically spring break for Eugene, but outside the palace walls, he crashes into a hard reality. The system that kept him safe in his silk-sheeted bed isn't particularly concerned with the well-being of anyone who isn't him. Eugene will have to level up his awareness if he means to be a real hero and time is running short. And moving on to some ongoing titles. The Old Guard Tales Through Time from Image Comics is a star-studded anthology event. The best-selling, critically acclaimed The Old Guard, now a net hit Netflix movie starring Charlize Theron, returns with new stories by Greg Rucka, Leandro Fernandez, and an all-star lineup of guest creators expanding the world of the immortal warriors in shocking ways. Meet the immortals families, witness never before seen adventures and discover the first appearance of a major new character. Featuring writers, Brian Michael Bendis, Kelly Sue DeConnick, Mac Fraction, Vita Ayala, Jason Aaron, David Walker and more, and artists Valentine Delandro, Nicola Scott, Michael Avon Omig, Raphael Albuquerque, Mike Henderson, Matthew Clark, Kano, and more. And Black Hammer Volume 5, Reborn Part 1 from Dark Horse. The Eisner Award-winning superhero saga returns in this ongoing series, picking up 20 years later with new series artist Caitlin Yarsky. In 1986, Black Hammer and the rest of Spiral City's greatest superheroes seemingly died defeating the cosmic despot known as anti-god and saving the world. But one woman refused to believe they were truly gone. Lucy Weber, the daughter of Black Hammer, learning that her dad had sacrificed himself to save the other heroes, Lucy soon took up the mantle of Black Hammer and carried on the legacy of her father as the world's greatest superhero. Now it's 20 years later and Lucy and the world have moved on. Living in the suburbs of Spiral City, Lucy is married and has children, 
but all is not blissful. Her marriage is falling apart, her job has reached a dead end, and for mysterious reasons, she hasn't picked up the hammer in years. But as her domestic life begins to crumble, the secrets of the last 20 years and the reasons Lucy really gave up being Black Hammer begin to resurface, threatening her family and the peace she has tried hard to find for herself. Black Hammer Reborn is the next era of the Black Hammer universe, a 12-issue series by Jeff Lemire and Caitlin Yarsky that juxtaposes an achingly human story of domestic life, marriage, parenthood, and destiny with a pulse-pounding superhero thriller that peels back new layers of mystery and pulls the Black Hammer history into the present. And a series I've been loving, Undiscovered Country, Volume 3, Possibility from Image. The smash hit series by New York Times bestselling writer Scott Snyder and Charles Soule, with art by Giuseppe Camuncoli, newcomer Leonardo Marcello, Grassi, and Eisner Award-winning colorist Matt Wilson continues. The journey through the transformed United States continues as our group of explorers ventures into the third zone, Possibility, a region built on the endlessly evolving landscape of American creativity from folklore to VR. The team will encounter bizarre transformations and amalgamations of the nation's greatest cultural achievements as they try to survive long enough to tell a story of their own. And some new series, Black Cotton Volume 1 from Scout Comics. Black Cotton is a comic, but it's also a mindset that's being explored in a comic. Set in an alternate reality where the social order of white and black is reversed when it comes to social standing and class. The Cottons are at the top of the food chain, part of the 1%, and are seemingly untouchable. However, that all changes when Zion, their police officer's son, who decided not to follow in the footsteps of his father and matriculate towards running the family business, is involved in the shooting of a minority white woman. In a reality similar to our own, social tensions are already high, race is a hot topic, and the call for equality between white and black is aggressively being pursued. Thus, Zion Cotton shooting Elizabeth Nightingale, a 20-something college student on a scholarship for track, ignites their city in a fury of protests and a call for action against racial injustice. Led by the family's patriarch, Elijah Cotton, and matriarch, Jaleesa Cotton, the Cottons are thrust into the middle of a highly controversial predicament and immediately attempt to use their wealth, prestige, and power to remedy the problem. However, while the youngest Cotton, Xavier, a teenager, actively protests against the social injustices with his friends, the middle child, Kia Cotton, is the acting CCO of Black Cotton Ventures, a multi-billion dollar manufacturing conglomerate, does damage control for her wayward brother. Ultimately, more division is created between both families as the Nightingales, unwilling to be assuaged, seek justice for Elizabeth, their daughter, who survived. And Sweet Paprika, Volume 1 from Image Comics, is Bridget Jones's diary meets Sex in the City with a pinch of The Devil Wears Prada in the new international hit by acclaimed creator Mirka Andolfo. Paprika is a successful businesswoman, a New Yorker of Italian origin. Job and career consume her, forcing her to neglect her personal needs as well as friends and family. Her heart is broken from a previous relationship and its consequences, and a rigid upbringing has made her a very introverted person. She wants a romantic relationship, but she doesn't know what she's doing. Not like Dill, a naive and suave delivery boy with an angelic attitude, handsome and always surrounded by beautiful women falling for him. He doesn't have a worry in the world, and this makes Paprika nervous. But he's the guy who could help her with her feelings and with sex. Okay, just a few more in my final section. Olympia from Fantagraphics. Forming a trio as formidable as their protagonists, Bastien Vives, Jerome Moulot, and Florent Rupert deliver an explosive grand symphony of adventure as well as a very touching and funny character study in this eagerly anticipated sequel to The Grand Odalesque. Meet Alex, Carol, and Sam, the most notorious trio of cat burglars of the 21st century. The trio uses technology, know-how, and some serious chutzpah bordering on hubris to reinvent a profession that has lost much of its fun and insolence since the early 20th century. 
After successfully stealing Le Grand Odalesque by ingress from the Louvre, the art thieves have a new mission. Nav Edouard Manet's Olympia plus two other masterpieces from the Petit Palais in Paris. Naturally, complications ensue, and not just from the fact that Carol is nine months pregnant at the time of the heist. The All-Nighter published by Dark Horse from Chip Zdarsky and Jason Liu, the Eisner winning team behind Afterlift. The All-Nighter is a story about found family and a new twist on superheroes. Welcome to the All-Nighter, the only diner in town where you can get coffee and a meal from sunset to sunrise. The staff are friendly, kind of, and happy to serve you, sometimes, and it would never cross their minds to drink customer's blood. Alex is bored. Flipping ver burgers for strangers all night is no way for a vampire to live. But he and his fellow vampires, Joy, Cynthia, and Ian, have agreed to blend into human society. Inspired by superhero movies, one of the few passions in his unlife, Alex decides to don a cape and start fighting bad guys. But his decision will have bigger consequences than he realizes for himself and for everyone he wants to protect. This is a comicsology original digital series that's in print for the first time. And last but not least for my generation, Masters of the Universe Revelation from Dark Horse. This is the official comic book prequel to the upcoming Netflix television show written by showrunner Kevin Smith and episode writer Tim Sheridan and featuring art by Mindy Lee. Following a vicious Orlok's attack on his father, King Randor, He-Man learns the creatures is linked to the origin of the Sword of Power. To save Randor and put an end to the chaos, He-Man embarks on an epic journey that pits him against his longtime foes, Skeletor and Evil Lynn, and sees Tila take the reins of a powerful legacy. That's all for me. As always, I hope you heard a title or five to add to your TBR, and thank you for your time. My email is there if you have any questions or title suggestions.